Howdy, and welcome to back to my channel. Today we got a happy little package from Fenway Labs. Do, 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 do. Actually, Fenway Networks. Yeah, cool guys in in England, and they have this adapter piece for the hot shock. Now, here's the thing: in England, you have a one jewel limit of how fast you can take things. We're going to do a series of videos that um, comply with the, the, the Great Britain limits, um, go a little farther and still stay under one jewel, and then, and then, we're going to take this a little farther in another video, because there's a lot of good things you can do with this kit right here. I have a lot of good suggestions um, to go beyond. Um, to go beyond the um, one jewel and to sell other people, the Singapore, Australia, what have you, it, to turn this thing into a monster. Now, of course, uh, you got Worker who came out with an 18 kilogram spring. Um, you can catch 18 kilograms of this thing, it's not that hard. Um, but um, you can go well beyond this. So, I got this today in the mail. It's basically these pieces right here. He has an insert here that better goes in the center of your dart, like so. And it's it's basically got this this cut right here that looks to be about eight millimeters, nine millimeters, yeah. So um, at any rate, this is actually a piece of nine sixteenths. Um, so this is good because when I go to couple it, make this coupler, and make this a coupler adapter, and I show, you know. Finland Networks, um, how to make it put make this a coupler and actually use 1736 barrels like this blaster is right here. Okay, he's gonna really love it because essentially this is the same size as this. No joke. So essentially, he's got a piece of 9 16 that goes into here, and then here, the way he built it, he built it so ingenious that it fits on top of here and it seals very nicely. Now you may think, okay, uh, it's not 17th or seconds, so uh, it's not going to be tight. Well, if you want it tight, you can just put a piece of 17th or seconds in here. But the thing is, is that this front part compensates for it so air doesn't leak past the dot. It's pretty cool, actually. So, we're going to get started on this um, and show you guys how to, how to put this in. should be fairly easy to do. Alright, so I am going to do this a long way around because I want to show everybody how to do it. Okay. And put in mind that I take apart pistols just about every day, every single day. If not more than one pistol in a day. Okay. Um, I may take apart, there have been times before wars where I've taken apart a dozen blasters in a day just to get them all fine-tuned and ready to go. Simply because I'm a very competitive uh, player and I like my stuff at very top-notch conditions. Um, so, as you can see, if it pops out, I'm putting it by where it is. Um, they're all pretty much, they're all the same size screw, however. So, in reality, uh, you wipe off any excess uh, plastic junk you see. In reality, I can just put them probably aside like that and I'm fine. Because they're all, they're all the same size uh, on a hot shock. So, um, up here, over here, there we go. So, we're going to take it, and any ones that are still not down, you just hold by the shell and there it is. So here is the firing mechanism for a hot shock. Nice beefy catch right there. Um, the, it has actually very good internals. The only thing I didn't like about it is it can't use red springs in it. I wish you could use red springs, but that's okay because there's a good selection of um, of of um, uh, of you know seven eight springs out there that will fit in here perfectly. Also, the chrono spring will fit in there too. If you want a little up. Now I'd already taken the AR out. But essentially what there is, you just you undo this, there's an A on here, you remove it, okay? Then you take out this peg right here, which pops out, okay? So essentially you just have this. So, here's what you do. You take this piece right here, push this 
fallen down. It would be nice if there was an indicator of how far to push us down. Because I noticed that um, how far to push us down was a, was a critical thing. So it should be enough to fit a rival ball, about an inch, I would say. Or well, if I was looking at it right past, if you're looking through it, right past this, this pot right here, this over here. So then essentially what I do here is I take this, I tighten it down like so, see, and I push it in like that. I found that putting this in uh, first was a lot better. You then put it in your plunger tube. Lock it up over here. You line these these up over here, and you essentially just now yeah, lock it in as so. So another thing you have to keep in mind when you're putting this in is there's a little registration mark right here, and you want to line it when you put it in. You want to line it into that right there. Now the first time I did it, I didn't even notice that line, and it's so not discreet that it just kind of pushed the plastic out of the way. But essentially. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Essentially, um, it, it should just snap in as so, just like that. Yeah, so when you do that, and then that moves into there. Also, this front part right here, even though the barrel's loose, this is tight to a dart. So it actually has a good air seal, so when you are walking around with it, it doesn't dump out, which I like a lot. At that point, I can put my my plunger rod here, like so, and I'll put in mind that on this side and this side on this look the same, so you want to keep looking at the plunger rod um, thing, uh, orientation by taking this finger and keeping it here when you install the whole thing. That, that's essentially what I did. Um, I'm going to put this in like so. my catch here, as so, and there, okay, that's lined it, on my catch side, good, push down on my catch spring as, at like that, now, I prefer that people put in the, uh, the red shell first, when you're doing this, on a hot chalk, because it's, uh, it's gonna support the whole thing. So, when I do it, is I will take usually either the grip screws down here or the screws over here, but since there's no screws over here, I'm gonna do these ones first just to tighten the whole thing up, okay? Like that. Hot Shock's a little different than Fire Strike. Uh, takes a little getting used to, but it's, it's not really that big a deal. You just kind of get used to it. And you notice there's a peg right here that goes on top of the plunger that goes into this gray piece. Yeah, so you want to make sure that that's in there. All right. Then you want to take the gray piece. Boom. 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 I'm going to secure the catch. When you do that, you want to make sure that that's engaging. You can feel the catch engaging. Right. You, so it's, it's not staying back. But staying back, that means the catch spring isn't in or it's loose or something. There's a little anchor point up there that you want to land on top of the catch spring. And then, of course, you just take your screws. You line it up as so. There it is. Easy. But the hot shock is a little rickety when it comes to this catch, uh, this catch mechanism. It is, however, very rewarding because look at the size of that tube. Um, for stock, it's really good, but for modded, whoa, man. Oh, wow. I like that. Also, if you dry fire it, yeah, 
have it like that. You don't want it slamming against your other. Although it does look like it has a pretty good infill rate on the 3D printing. So for a stock spring, I don't think it would be a problem. I would just do that as a safety. So let's fire this thing. All right, so for this test, we're gonna use standard elite darts because this isn't like mega high performance right now. It will be, but it's not yet, okay? You have to put in the support from the front, not the back, because you have the tightening of the barrel. So you have to do that. And you gotta kinda judge it. I felt that that peg right there is like perfect, perfect size. The one reinforcement peg. So if you're looking through the light and you push it through and the very top of that is there, yeah, that's that's where you want it. So we're shooting at Cartier target, two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Of course, made from duct tape. And ooh, you can feel that snugness in the very front. Look at that. Wow, that's nice. I shouldn't be pointing that at, at my LCD, but it is just a stock spring. A little low, but that's because the sights. It was straight though. Okay, two. Mm, low again, but I, oh, I can hear that impact. That's nice. Again, I'm just shooting low. I don't know, it's me. I'm, I'm not shooting it right. Hold on, let's raise it up just a little bit. Mm, still shooting low. But I can see the power, and it's actually pretty straight. Mm, again, I missed it by very little. This is me, this is no, hold on, hold on. Hmm, that was high. It's pretty good. Good power. There, I got one. I got one. Ah, it's been so long since I fired a, a hot shot. Probably 2016 since I fired a hot shot. Damn, low. So, as you can see, for elite darts, it's actually pretty good for elite darts. Uh, let's throw some rivals in there. So, we have a piece of uh, headshot ammo. I'm gonna load in the front, just like that. Not bad, not bad. It has no spin time to it. That's the only thing it really needs. But at high speed, you won't need much. I mean, you might have to put a little divot in there, like just something that's hanging on the front. At really high speed, let's say 18K, you can probably just put a little notch there and that's enough of a spin tap. But it doesn't have any spin tap, so that means no Magnus effect for this. But for close range, who cares? I mean, if you're playing in an old rival war, you got a hot shock and you can just, yeah. That's not bad. Also sh should be noted that if you're using rival, you can fit like three rival balls up here and it works really well, see? So I can like do that. And even if I have my arm amputated or I'm using a camera, I can prime this thing and go, you ain't heard the last of me. <laughs> Good for if you're comparing like a stock war kind of blaster. When it comes to something modded, however, like majorly modded, however. And this is where I think this kit can really shine is if, if they made an adapter that can supply for coupler because you that thing can fit a coupler yeah I hit it even sideways like that I hit it so when you're talking about more power you're talking more, more consistency you're talking about longer barrel you're talking more focused instead of going out like this little front part here you're going out 11 inches of barrel, so this is kind of why I like modded so much better. It's more accurate, I'm like highly modded, um, super highly modded, okay? Like Nick War kind of modding, like that's a Nick War blaster, okay? So anyway, let's chronograph this. So here we go. This is stock spring with the Fen Labs adapter, which is this is main market. It's made for stock spring or slightly modded. 89 88 That was error, but that felt around the same velocity So 94 this is stock spring folks 94 
I haven't put in a, a modded spring, modded catch spring. Only the adapters changed and that's it. 93. And this dot's squashed. So if this result is off, it's the duct. It's not the blaster. It starts squish for some reason. 80. See? So the squish dot, yeah, it was it was it was 80. But dude, this thing can pull an average of like 90 feet per second with a stock spring. So if you're going to wars and you want just a little more umph, um, in it, like a, let's say an indoor war and an outdoor war, you want like, you know, 70, 80 feet. Of, of slightly arched range. This will work for you, okay? It will actually do pretty good. Um, so so for that, that's really great. Let's see here. Let's try some rivals. I'm not expecting it to go great with a stock springs, but I know if I were to put an Apollo spring in here or Worker 18, I could get some pretty serious power. 52. Error. 53. So stock spring, 52, 53. Put in mind what's in a Kronos, and that's only guaranteed to do 90 feet per second, is about an 8 kilogram spring. And what's in here is probably like a 3 kilogram spring. So I wasn't expecting much, but for shooting around just as a close range, kind of a, a kind of a backup you know, Rival Blaster, this might be really good, but what I'm impressed with more than anything is its full-length performance. That's pretty good. Most of the shots were right under the target, and I can tell because this thing doesn't have the sights. I'm used to, I'm used to Blasters having sights. That's me, okay? It was hard for me to feel exactly where it is. Also, the grip feels a little different. I tend to point it down, and the reason is, is this anchoring right here, hitting my fingers and making me do that. When I fire, so when I'm squeezing, yeah, you see it. I mean, I see it. When I'm pointing it slightly down every time I fire. Also, this trigger, being larger here and smaller here, is making my fingers. Yeah, you can see it. I can see it right there. Yeah, I'm used to the the, the pullback being more straight. And when you're a target shooter, like I am, and I will shoot stuff with this pistol over 200 feet away, I will hit people with this thing. Okay, and this really is not much more than this. It just has a different tube, has a different spring, has a longer barrel, has a coupler. What you're going to see in subsequent videos is we're going to come very close to this. Yes, and then it's not very hard to do with this kit. It actually, it was easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought that that was going to be a piece of 73 seconds on the outside. And it's actually 17 seconds on the inside. And in other words, it's 9 16. So a lot of people do that. They'll call, a lot of countries will do that. They'll call 17 seconds the inner diameter and not the outer, which I think is the case here. And wow, you know, I that means I, I don't even have to neck a piece of 17 seconds to go into a piece of half inch to go into 9 16. I can go straight 9 16 just like a boat of prey is. And there's a lot of uses for this technology, including making couple pieces for blasters like this, okay, or chronoses, or fire strikes. It, it doesn't end. And this is why I'm very enthused with this. But for right now, I'm reviewing this as it is intended. It's intended as a uh, upgrade to full length and rival, essentially, okay. And if you take this out, you can. Another thing is, you can't push, the, like I said, you can't take this adapter and push it from the back. I kind of wish you could, but you can't because of this neck up here. But you can push it from the front. I just found the perfect spot to actually do it is where it's the, this nub is actually connecting to the shell is the best place. So let's take this outside real quick. I really would like to take this outside. Even though this isn't like a mega a long range uh, configuration. I am very impressed to do 90 feet per second with a stock spring. And that, of course, is because of this airflow right here. It's a lot of airflow. All right, so let's uh, let's fire this baby. <laughs> not bad. That That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Do you guys remember the Thunderhawk that I broke out uh, about a week ago? Yeah. That's not bad. Shoot Mr. Angel there.
Oh, a little low. And you guys know why low, because this whole blaster makes my hand want to shoot low, so I have to aim a little higher. Oh! Yeah. Angel of death. <laughs> That's cool. Day shooting stock elite. All right, so all right, so let's shoot straight out and see how, what kind of range I can get with this thing. You know, that's like 60 feet across the yard. A little bit of hop there, but that's like 60 feet across the yard. That's, yeah. Well, let's see, from that to here, yeah, it's, that's a little over 60 feet. I'd say 62, 65 feet. That's not bad. I would say this thing can shoot probably about about 60 flat with a stock spring. That's that's not bad range for a lead. But as you can see, with a normal lead, it just, yeah. It's kind of why I, I, I like stepping. It's fast and more accurate but I know a lot of people like Britain you're stuck with you're you're stuck with stock for the most part or just more than stock you're probably looking at 110 120 as your limit to one jewel right there yeah so um I like it for for like a sight on for light of wars it's pretty cool but we're gonna do more with this oh yes just keep watching over the next week a uh, week or two we're going to do some more crazy stuff with this. We're going to make this an insane monster. Because it has everything you need to be an insane monster. It just needs a little bit of motivation. So until next time, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing. Or I'll find you. And I'll shoot you with elite dots until you think happy, happy thoughts forever. Ha 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 ha.